But understand that what you decide to do today could have a huge impact on your life over the coming days and weeks. America is unraveling each day and fast. Unfortunately, I know most Americans will ignore these warning signs and just hope for the best. And by the time they wake up to reality, it will be too late for them. But I don't want that to be you. So if you want the same details I'm sharing with my family about what to expect from this $85 trillion economic super collapse, you need to get access to the information that's inside this envelope now. That's because what's inside this envelope is information you'll never hear being talked about by the president or by members of Congress or by the mainstream media. It's information from me that no other former government insider I know is willing to reveal the way I am. That's because the last thing the elites want is a premature panic from regular people like you. They'd rather try and control the crowd. But I feel a moral obligation to prepare you, even if the truth is hard to hear and frightening. That's why today I'm going to go through three danger zones in our economy that I'm worried about most if I'm right about the super collapse. So you can see why I'm predicting the end of the American economy the way we know it in the next six to 12 months. Like I said, I've never released this information to the public before, but today I'm giving you that chance. That's because as my fellow Americans, I believe you deserve to know the truth about what I fear could happen to the way we get our food, our energy, and our medicine. These are the three danger zones under threat of economic collapse I'm concerned about most, and I'm going to talk about each one now. Danger zone one, America's food supply. According to the CDC's website, a disaster can easily disrupt the food supply at any time. In the event of disaster or emergency, they advise Americans to have at least a three-day supply of food. But have you ever asked yourself, what happens if multiple disasters hit our food supply chain simultaneously? Just look at what's happened so far this year. In early 2022, USA Today reported shortages at grocery stores across the country have grown more acute in recent weeks as Omicron continues to spread and winter storms have piled on. Then, Putin decided to roll Russian tanks into Ukraine, igniting yet another disaster. As the UN told BBC, Russia's invasion of Ukraine could soon cause a global food crisis that may last for years. That's because practically a third of the world's wheat exports come from Russia and Ukraine. It's why just a few weeks later, Bloomberg wrote, U.S. bread makers fear soaring costs as turmoil engulfs the wheat trade. Of course, wheat is hardly the only thing stores need to sell bread. What about the plastic or paper the bread is wrapped in? What about the ovens used to bake the bread? What about the truckers who bring the bread to the store? I believe a disruption is coming that will deprive Americans of basic food items like bread, eggs, milk, meat, cheese, and more. Because of intense political tensions in the country, rising prices, and intense work schedules to meet delivery deadlines under the supply chain crunch, I believe it's very likely that we will see a long-haul trucker strike in the next 6 to 12 months. I believe that strike would last two weeks or more. And do you know what will happen when those long-haul truckers don't go to work for a week? Business Insider reported that when that happens, grocery stores would run out of food in three days. Then what? Is the CDC going to tell you they've updated the three-day emergency guidelines on their website? It will be too late for you at that point. That's why, in just a minute, I'm going to tell you what I've been buying to protect my family before extreme food shortages hit later this year. I'll even tell you how long you should be prepared in a food emergency, because trust me, it's a lot longer than three days. If you want to ignore my advice after hearing what I'm doing, that's your decision. But I'm not going to sit on my hands and hope. And I don't want you to feel like that's your only choice either. Especially when you see that our food supply relies on another supply I'm also deeply concerned about. Danger zone number two, America's energy supply. See, even after a trucker strike, the only way the trucks can deliver our food is if they have enough gas to run on. And right now, we're in the middle of the worst energy crisis since the 1970s. And not just because of rising prices at the pump. As you may know, in the aftermath of that oil crisis, our government built something called the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, SPR. For a worst case scenario, we all hope never comes to pass. Over the last 50 years, it's grown steadily from administration to administration, having recently hit 564 million barrels of oil. And then suddenly everything changed. As NBC wrote, under Biden, U.S. oil reserves to drop by 40%. The article continues, the number will fall to 384.6 million barrels, a level not recorded since 1984. The scary part of this is that the SPR is not actually meant to last this very long. According to one estimate I found before Biden's latest action, it could supply us with oil for about 1.5 years without being replenished. Of course, now that we have 40% less oil, 
that supply would run out 40% faster. I believe that instead of that oil reserve lasting us a year and a half, it will last us less than a year. I also believe it's extremely likely we could use our strategic petroleum reserve to help Europe. This isn't on anyone's radar because most Americans aren't thinking about the boomerang effects of our economy's recent actions. But because of sanctions we imposed on Russia, it's likely that our European allies will run out of oil. When they do, the U.S. will offer to supply them with even more of our oil and natural gas to bail them out. You may think that's far-fetched, but this is exactly what's happening right now. The Washington Times just reported that President Biden has sent 5 million barrels of oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve abroad. And I predict he's going to send far more oil abroad at a time when prices are rising and we're running out of oil. In the process, he's going to destroy everyday Americans' daily lives. As Bloomberg wrote, U.S. monthly oil shipments to Europe climbed to the highest level since 2016. It's why overseas, the English-run BBC reported recently, Russia sanctions, can the world cope without its oil and gas? This is a dangerous and evolving situation. That's why this envelope contains information about what I fear Putin is planning next, so you aren't blindsided. If you have any money in the banks or in the stock market, this could impact you directly. And if you think all of this is just too far-fetched, please understand this isn't the first time I've warned my readers about what Russia could do to our energy supply. A decade ago, in my best-selling book, Currency Wars, I wrote, Russia's use of natural gas as a geopolitical weapon goes beyond threats. Then earlier this year, I tweeted this, and while the situation surrounding the way we get our food and energy is bad, it's this next danger zone that keeps me up at night. Danger zone number three, America's medicine supply. Just like trucks need gasoline to deliver our food, the only way our economy runs is if the people who run it, the truckers and everyone else, all have access to necessary drugs and medicine. Up until recently, that may have sounded like a foregone conclusion. And government officials might have reminded us about the other strategic reserve in our country. I'm talking about the Strategic National Stockpile, America's largest reserve of drugs and medical equipment. But then COVID hit. As NBC News wrote, the country's largest repository of drugs and medical equipment is designed to be used as a stopgap, not a solution, during emergencies. Fighting the COVID-19 pandemic was just one emergency that taxed the system. But I believe another catalyst event will be breaking the medical system altogether. Based on my research, it will likely be because of the U.S. officially entering a geopolitical conflict. Rosemary Gibson, a senior advisor on health care, warned government officials about just that back in 2019, saying, Medicines can be used as a weapon of war against the United States. Think about it. We're the world's largest economy. That means we have a bullseye on our back. What second largest world economy do you think might have an interest in taking us down? Of course, I'm talking about China. Sound too hard to believe? Well, did you know we get nearly half of all our penicillin from China? I doubt most Americans realize it.